Welcome to the channel everyone, I'm Scratch, this is another Dragonair Silent Gods video, Merry Christmas to everyone that celebrates it and hopefully you guys are gonna have an amazing, amazing time with the family, with the loved ones or with friends, whatever you guys are in the world and make the most out of it. 2023 is coming to an end, right? What a year, what a year and it feels like so many things happen, it's just, uh, just crazy. In today's video I want to cover a topic guys that a lot of you guys are constantly asking me to make a video on and we are talking about timing and the presets of your teams. I'm going to show you how to utilize that, how to make the most out of it and I'm going to take you from kind of like content to content. We're going to go over the vortex and over the other bosses but first I want to I wanna explain you how that works okay. So if we're going to head over to the vortex right here you have these bosses guys which will have a multiple set of skills okay and if we're gonna start the fight directly then we're gonna come back to the presets and uh, explain you everything else so the very first thing to do you have a uh, timer on the top left corner that will display uh, the time decreasing and it will show you roughly on what sort of rotation is the boss usually most of the bosses are on 20 seconds all the dungeons and including the, the vortex they have a 20 seconds uh, window to use all their skills or a cycle you see bang exactly 20 seconds now one thing that happens in dragonair is that you will see the boss uses uh, it reaches the meter on the skill but then it still takes like a second or so for the boss to actually damage you to hit you that's some sort of a delay i feel like it's more of a coding issue for the game where you have the the boss coming in with the hits but they're actually not coming at the moment when they should you know and that's not a problem necessarily you can actually use that to your own advantage you should always Try to come into the fight before you're doing your timing, your presets, and have a look at the fight. See what happens. When is the boss using this skill? Roughly six seconds in. Uh, when do I need to heal? Do I need to heal after the first skill, the second, the third? When do I get damaged the most? Because I want, I want the boss to actually hit me, make me lose some HP, and then heal, you know, and kind of like make the most out of it. You can even heal in between the the skill if he has a multi hit for example check this out this third skill has double hit so how you may notice he will slam me with the first the the first uh, the first hit there we go one then my garius stop comes in heals then he comes in with the second hit you know so i can cut in between the hits and that is time that is not just coincidence okay i want it like this because the first hit will actually take some hp down then i get to heal back Okay, so my heal is not in vain. I'm not gonna heal at the wrong moment. But that's how it works for my team. It will be very different based on what champions you're using, what support you have in your team, what's the plan behind the team that you're building, you know? And this boss has four, four different uh, skills right here in, the, in a cycle of 20 seconds. It will not use this at 21 seconds. It will always be 20 seconds. So it means that if you are planning to time your champions to use the skills at the same moment every time for the entire duration of the fight they need to use the skill at exactly 20 seconds no more no less okay because if you are putting 20 seconds point one you're slowly gonna gonna lose time on it if you're putting a 19.8 for example you're gaining time and the the time when you're using the skill is constantly decreasing and it's just going down and down and down and down and down and it will completely desync, okay? So that's something that you don't want to do. Now, let me just quickly show you the presets. Then I'm going to come back to the run. Because you're going to kind of like get a completely different understanding of what exactly I'm saying. I just wanted to point those things out at the beginning. Because that is very important for every single fight. Check the timer to make sure it's on 20 seconds. Usually, the only bosses that were not on 20 seconds were the open, uh, open world bosses. The Chaos Shadow one. Uh, Earth to the Balor, uh, the Resurgent Dragon. So all those bosses were on 18 to 19 seconds, more or less. Something, uh, something like that. So it was a bit harder to kind of like uh, make it work. So if you head over to presets, edit skill timing, you will notice that I have completely different times for most of them. In case, if you had no idea, you can actually type it and put whatever you guys want, you know. It doesn't matter. You can literally do that. And then you can reset it back and... Uh, take it to default so let's just start with my very first champion on the list and how you may notice all of them except my damage dealer which has the skill on 16 seconds 
they have their uh, skill casting interval at 20 seconds to match the cycle of the boss. So because of it, my champions will always, no matter what, use their skills at that specific moment during the fight. At least against this, this boss, you know. So we have Frerbart at 14.5 seconds to use the ultimate skill the very first time and put decrease attack on the boss. Then every 20 seconds, he will use this skill again. But he will always use this skill at the exact same moment, okay? Because I have a 20 seconds uh, casting interval. If I change that to 19.5, he will slowly use it faster and faster and faster and faster and faster, and it will desync. So that will be overall a problem for my team. Then I have uh, Sheena right here using her ultimate at 16.6 seconds. Now, why exactly so precise, Scratch? Well, basically, I have Rayta in the team which will increase the duration of the debuffs by 5 seconds every time we have that on, okay? So the main reason why I have it like this was initially because my Frere Bart was at 16.6, .6, but I actually changed it because my decrease attack was not spot on on uh, the Vortex and my team was dying a bit too early. So I could adjust the timing on, uh, on uh, Sheena right now. I don't need it to, to be like that. But she has the Crown of the Unclean or the Witch's Remains artifact that puts defense down so because of it i want my rata to extend the duration of that debuff and keep it for five seconds longer in the fight so me in my team i have defense down on the boss 15 seconds out of 20 with one artifact and that's because i'm timing it with rata you see 16.6 and 21.5 which uh, leaves an exact gap of 4.9 seconds in between using the skills you know now i do need to keep the skill at 21 or 21.5 seconds on Rayta because I want her to give increased defense to my team, okay? That increased defense will actually help my team to tank more during the fight. Now, she will use this increased defense and cleanse if needed. Of course, it won't be needed on difficulty 3, but it will be needed on difficulty 4, right before the big AoE from the boss, the fourth skill. And everybody is on 20 seconds. Then I have Garius. Healing at the 15 seconds mark. And that is exactly in between the hits, guys. You know, he's going like this. Bang, first hit. And Garius comes, heals. And then the second hit comes in. And will be on a 20 seconds. So if we're going to go back to the fight, okay. Now you will see exactly what happens with a much better, uh, a much better view. A much better understanding. Because you will know uh, everything, how it will work. Because I explained you. So how you may notice, I don't have my damage dealer timed because that will make me lose damage. Her 16 seconds is amazing, you know. So she can go and use whatever she wants. Then we have Frerbart dropping in the decrease attack right now before the boss is using the uh, third skill. So we're getting one hit, Garius with a heal. Second hit, which is fine. Then I have Sheena coming in with her ultimate, putting defense down. We're waiting a bit longer in there. Then Rayta coming in, increased defense on my team. So that gives me more damage reduction as well and increases the duration of decrease attack and the duration of defense down. Then we have the damage dealer going crazy at every 16 seconds. I don't want to lose 14 seconds because that adds up quite a bit and that will make me lose damage. And when my uh, Garius gets hit by this skill right here, which is the single hit, I have increased defense from Rayta, which keeps my team alive for much longer okay so is everything timed perfectly this with the 21 seconds was actually uh, a tip that i got from one of you guys in a, in my stream the other day we were talking like scratch have you tried the 21 seconds to keep the defense up for the second skill and i was like hmm i haven't tried that but let me try it and honestly it's much much better is is keeping my champion alive longer you know because usually you want the team to die, your champion to die, when he gets hit like this, that means that your team is strong. It will not die on the uh, and on the AoEs, you know? So that's how you kind of like want the, the fight to, to end. And this will be rinse and repeat for the entire duration of the fight, guys. So that's how timing works. And that's how you should kind of like look at it. You know, you, re you really need to think of what you're planning to do with your team, with your champions, and then come in here, look at the skills, when he's using the skills, it's actually easier for you to time the skills based on his animations when he's actually doing the damage rather than 
having the the skill right here so don't look at the skill here look when the damage actually hits your champion because that gives you a bit of time to use the skills in between you know so that's going to be very very important now this is how i'm doing my vortex that's my preset for my vortex team and hopefully you understood it i tried to make it as uh, simple as uh, as possible my team is pretty complex compared to most of the teams because i have a lot of factors going into it like when i want to uh, put the defense up when i want to increase the duration of debuffs when i want to land that debuff when i want to have decreased attack when i want to have the healing you know it's a lot of uh, a lot of stuff going in uh, with my team now if we are talking about dungeons okay i feel like not every single dungeon needs a preset so if we're gonna head over to grave of venom for example this is one of the dungeons where you don't need to have necessarily a, a, a time preset you know i do have a team preset of course because uh, i'm always uh, running one for most of the content just because i'm swapping gear around which is uh, amazing but i don't have any skill timing whatsoever on this on this fight you know you can do it if you think that you need it so i would say for this fight the one timing that you should do is think about what character puts defense down for you so let's just say frelbart does it for me okay we're gonna put him to land defense down at 12 seconds then i want to time it with my damage so i want my dps champions to deal damage after the defense down is is down so i I want Laurentil to buff at 12 seconds, but I don't want Hubert to go exactly at the 12 seconds. Let's put him at 13. Maybe I have a champion that has multi-hits to land the defense down like Erich instead of Frelbart, and I need the, the animation to end to ensure that that defense down lands before my ultimate goes from Hubert. So that's why you always want to put a bit, of a, a bit of a gap. One, one and a half seconds in between, but always... Keep them on 20 seconds. If not, they will desync. This part here is the most important thing, the 20 seconds one. I feel like if you're not doing this, that's that's an issue because your champions will desync, you know? The rest doesn't really matter for my team. Actually, none of this really matters for my team because they're kind of like going in sync anyway here. Now, if you want to bring decrease attack and you need decrease attack for the entire duration of the time and you, you, ha uh, you have two different champions that do that, you're going to want to time that. So let's just say... You have a, a Huberg that will land decrease attack, hypothetically, okay? So he will be the first one to go at 13 seconds, and he will cover it for uh, 10 seconds. So I'm going to have decrease attack till the 23 seconds in the fight. So then I want to make sure my second attack down champion will only attempt to put decrease attack at 23 seconds to cover the loss of decrease attack from there and go over on 20 seconds this will be on for 10 seconds as well but he will have 20 seconds to recover the skill he will have 20 seconds so like this i will always have decrease attack on the boss for the entire duration of the fight for all the 20 seconds cycle you know i will always have decrease attack unless you're getting resisted so that's one way on how you can do it now of course for this i have no preset whatsoever so i can just go in in the fight and let the champions do their own thing and go crazy you cannot time the battle skills. You can only time the ultimate skills. Now, if we're going to head over to a dungeon where you really need to have a timing, and uh, that's the Grave of Curse. So for the Grave of Curse, guys, the timing is really, really important. You need to remove the buffs from the boss, try to shield if you can, or make sure you have decreased attack. If no, he will absolutely obliterate you, okay? It will be very, very hard. So let me just show you what sort of presets I have in here. This is actually very different because... I am using a completely different team. So let's actually bring this one in here. And if you are looking at the skill timing, you see I have Vinyara. Now Vinyara reduces the ultimate energy on the boss and that will actually change the cycle. It won't be 20 seconds anymore. It will have a longer cycle on the boss. So it will be probably 23 seconds or 22 seconds. And I need to time the characters at 21 seconds instead to make sure I'm always at around the same time with my ultimate right before he's using his ultimate you know so this is the team that we are running i haven't actually tried this on a stage eight i was running adolphus and a different character before hopefully they should be they should be fine now adolphus was giving me some extra healing but let me just put some uh defense and extra accuracy i will need the extra accuracy and uh bring in the the characters here you know so she's gonna gonna go against them so that's fine 
So here again, pay attention to the to the timer. You see, we start with five minutes, and we can see when uh, the boss is using the skills. This boss only has three skills in his rotation, but one of them will actually buff. Okay, and when he has those buffs, he is very very dangerous. So we gotta make sure he is not wrecking us. Then of course we do have Vinyara, which will remove those buffs and will deplete the ultimate energy right about now. So the boss will not actually take the turn how he was meant to. We actually drop the energy back from him. But this boss seems to work more on 17.5 seconds or something like that rather than 20. Right now he has decreased attack. We shielded with Garius. So the boss cannot actually damage us a lot. He's not gaining a big shield. And the cycle will slightly change a bit now because we dropped his ultimate energy. So he's not going to be able to rotate as fast. Now, I want Davinyara to use her ultimate more or less at the same time. Now, it's pretty hard to time Vinyara with the ultimate energy that we're dropping from the boss to be spot on all the time. But because I've made it in such a way, she sometimes gains, gains time, she loses time. And she will always use it approximately at the same time duration. And the main thing that we really need to do here is to remove the buffs from the boss. You don't need to reduce the ultimate energy. That's not a necessity. The necessity here is to drop those buffs. So if you have a Dane, for example, you want to time his ultimate right about uh, now at some point to remove those buffs from him as soon as he gains them, you see? So again, Vinyara dropping that or dropping the ultimate energy, we get to heal with the rest of my team. We're putting that increased defense to uh, help a team a bit better. I could have changed the time a bit on... Uh, on uh, Rata, honestly, to give increased defense before the slam, but it seems like I timed it a bit, uh, a bit off with her. So I need to adjust that a bit, and then everything will be perfect. But either way, the run is working as, uh, as it is. You just really gotta pay attention to the buffs that the boss is placing on himself when he's using the skills, when you gotta drop them down. You see Vinyara, she's always at that, uh, using the skill at that moment all the time, you know? The only champion that kind of like goes a bit crazy is Reita. Maybe I haven't set the time for her, the timing, you know. But either way, as long as you have decreased attack, you have a shield on, the boss will bar barely gain any shield back, you know. So that's one of the main things to, to keep in mind. And yeah, Gertin, guys, she is absolutely amazing, okay. She's my most favorite epic uh, champion for this, uh, for this season. She rocks. Ice Blast, absolutely insane. You know, like such a good damage, melting bosses. So overall, very, very happy with uh, with what I'm seeing here, you know. And we should be taking this, uh, this boss down pretty soon. We dropped that ultimate energy before. We had the shield. The timings are pretty straightforward, you know. Once you understand the thing with the intervals and you kind of like need to check the boss's cycle, that's when everything becomes much, much easier. Because literally, that is the secret to it, you know? Understanding the cycle. And this boss went down like butter. I knew that this team will work uh, regardless, even though I, I didn't have Adolphus. You don't really need another, another healing in here. Vinyara actually helps with a bit of shield from the battle skill. And bang. Two minutes and two seconds on this dungeon. Pretty, pretty good, I would say, you know? Anything good? Defense and defense. I like that one. And of course, we got... Uh, legendary materials to uh, do some uh, some legendary gear later. Now, the one trick pony that we have in here, guys, is the Grave of Wrath, okay, as a dungeon. And I cannot time that one. Last season, I had block debuffs and a cleanser and was still out of sync. This time around, I have a bit of a, a, bit of a different approach to it because uh, I am using a uh, uh, fire sign there mainly for the immunity, because that's what character I have built at the moment. I will probably change it later on. Uh, I haven't beat stage 8 yet. I haven't really tried much either, though. So I will do that later on. Farming gear at the moment is not the biggest priority for me. But right here, this is the team that we're running. And uh, I have a cleanser. I have a block debuff champion. And even though I'm trying to time them to be used at different intervals and stuff, so this is on a 20 seconds too. The only thing that will change is that Faesa puts recharge speed penalty on the boss. 
So that will mess up his rotation. That will slow it down a bit, you know. Then you have the element of getting resisted on the debuff. So that will again mess up the entire rotation. Last season, I used Catherine instead of uh, Faesa, and that's what I would use this season too. The only problem is that I don't have her leveled up at the moment. But with her, I don't have the issue of speed penalty. So it's easier for me to tune the entire team. Now, one thing that you really wanna, you really, really wanna block from this boss is the recharge speed penalty that he puts on your team. So this is a bit harder to, to, to deal with, guys, because he's landing the very first debuffs right here, then this one's right here, and the distance from when he's using the skills is, is pretty long. It takes, it takes a bit of time, and the main issue that you will have is that the immunity might expire, maybe, you know? So I had to delay the skill quite a bit. You're not going to be able to block them from the very first try. You're going to have to wait till the second one anyway, because the boss is uh, using the skill so fast. But if you are not blocking the heal reduction, and you're not cleansing the recharge speed penalty, which should be blocked as well, you're going to be in trouble, you know? So right now we have immunity. The boss attempted to debuff, he cannot do it. But my immunity will slowly run out, okay? So sometimes, for whatever reason, it desyncs, and I still don't really understand why. So right now the boss will attempt to uh, put the recharge speed penalty, and that will not work because we do have immunity, you see? So that didn't work. And I have clans, a cleanser coming straight after. But the more I go into the run, the more this will desync. And this is mainly because I'm putting a uh, recharge speed penalty on the boss, you know. How I mentioned uh, previously, I didn't have that with, uh, with Catherine and this was working much, much better. But these are kind of like the timings that you would want to have on your block debuffs champion. And if you have a cleanser after. A cleanser will still be helpful. Maybe a V-Cook. You're getting a bit of extra healing. You're removing the poisons. You're not going to be in a in such a big uh, issue. You see, right now we have recharge speed penalty on the team. And you know why? Because I put recharge speed penalty on the boss, which slowed him down. My Faes, I used the skill at the 20 seconds mark, how I told her to do it. But because the boss was slower, we used the skill faster, if that makes sense. So we used the skill at the same time that we were meant to, but we slowed down the boss. So because of it, uh, the boss used the skills a bit later, and that actually uh, put uh, the second debuff on us from uh, his second skill, the recharge speed penalty. And that messes up the entire rotation after. So I will sort this team out later, but I just kind of like wanted to show you how it works out. You know, I'm, I'm building this stage without a problem, but I don't want to waste my stamina on it at the moment. I've got the accuracy that I needed for my, for my Vortex team, you know. But I'll show you this again. So. The block debuffs should go at 25.5 seconds on a 20 seconds cycle. Then if you have a cleanser, it should go after the 15.5 if you want. Okay, it's not a necessity. You can do it, uh, let's just say like here to go after like six seconds and put it on 20 second cycle. But this is already too late for the boss. So I still uh, suggest you to go at... And the cleanser would go at... And the cleanser will go at 16.5 seconds. That will be after the boss is attempting to uh, put decreased speed penalty on, a, on the team, you know. But that's how you should time your team here. And you see, I don't have the skill casting interval set only on two characters. I don't care about it on the others. I want them to use their skills as often as, uh, as possible. For the goblin, it's almost impossible to make one because you crit, you don't crit, you kill the wave, you don't kill the wave. And that will be a problem. Uh, overall so i wouldn't suggest you to attempt to make there uh, a preset unless it's constantly the same result you know hopefully you found this video helpful guys let me know in the comments down below if you are using different sort of strategies on how you are using your uh, presets and how you're selling the skills on uh, on your team and uh yeah appreciate every single one of you guys watching much love and i'll catch you all in the next video peace